Today we're heading to Standard to see if we can turn some incubates into huge hasty cats or vigilant dogs with Ginny Faye Gem here a second. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Sephrada Live, and it's time for another edition of Much Abroot About Nothing, and we have a super fun one this week. We are heading to our new standard format to play some Abzan Ginny Fay Incubate, and I'm pretty excited about this deck. Incubate's a really unique mechanic, and I think if you build around it, it can actually do some really cool things. So let's talk about our deck, what it's trying to do, jump into some games, see it in action, so our deck has two big payoffs, Ginny Faye Jetmere second and Glissa Herald of Predation. And our deck's also full of incubate creatures. So if you think about incubate, one of the new mechanics from March of the Machine, it's a very unique mechanic. So cards like Norn's Inquisitor, Elvish Vatkeeper, Progenitor Exarch, they're creatures that can add a lot of power to the battlefield. Like technically Norn's Inquisitor, it's a two mana one one that comes along with a two two or a three three. Elvish Vatkeeper, a three mana three three, comes along with a two two. Progenitor Exarch can make a bunch of three threes. The problem with Incubate is the Incubate tokens don't do anything right away. They're just non-creature artifacts hanging out on the battlefield, and to actually turn them into creatures, we need to take and spend two mana to transform them. So the idea of our deck is to essentially cheat on this transform cost. Uh, the easiest example is, is Glissa Herald of Predation. Glissa, actually a sneaky powerful card, has a bunch of abilities. You get to choose one on the beginning of combat. It can incubate twice, it can give your Fraxian's first start, it can death touch, or the big one, transform all your incubator tokens. So what we can do is just play a bunch of Norns Inquisitors and Glistening Dawns and Progenitor Exarchs to make a ton of Incubator tokens. And then we play Glissa and rather than spending two mana and two mana and two mana to transform all our Incubates, Glissa just does that for free. Jimmy Faye kind of does the same thing, but it's even better. The difference is you gotta have on the battlefield first, but Jimmy Faye, when we make a token, we can choose to instead have that token be a 2-2 cat with haste or a 3-3 dog with vigilance. And this does some absurd things with Incubator. Incubator. So the trick is, if we have a Ginny Fee out and we incubate, we can make the incubate into a cat or dog, but it still gets to keep the plus one plus one counter. So the best example of this is Glistening Dog. Glistening Dog, four mana, you incubate X twice where X is the number of lands you control. So if we have four lands, let's say, we're going to make two four four incubates or two incubates with four plus one plus one counters. If we have Ginny Fay out, this gets really wild. So let's say we turn three Ginny Fay, turn four we Glistening Dawn. Glistening Dawn would normally make two incubates with four plus one plus one counters, but instead we can turn them into two two hasty cats. So we get two 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 hasty cats, but they get to keep the plus one plus one counter. So they're going to be six six hasty cats, which is a super powerful turn four. And Jenny Faye can do that same trick with all of our other incubates, like Jenny Faye into the Progenitor X Arctic makes a ton of hasty tokens or vigilant tokens. So that's the main idea of our deck. Overload on incubators and then cheat on the incubate cost with Jenny Faye or with Glissa. Otherwise, we got some card draw to keep us churning through our deck and also makes tokens so it works with Ginny Faye, a bunch of removal, mana base, pretty typical stuff, sideboard, trying Invasion of Gabacon instead of Duress. Gonna see if that's actually worth it in the slot. It seems like it could be good. We got a lot of creatures so we can maybe flip it and then it's sort of like a temporary Duress that also can protect our creatures and pump our team. Uh, some removal, Graveyard Heat Sweeper, Stonebrain to get rid of Atroxes, and that is Absent Incubate for Standard. That's our Much Abrew deck for this week. So. Let's jump into some games and see, can our plan work of making huge hasty cats or vigilant dogs with Ginny Faye? How many incubators can we flip at once with Glissa? Let's find out. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Need some March of the Machines cards? Well, you can snag them from our awesome sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. Mm, much brew about nothing time. We are playing some Abzan Incubate, Ginny Fay Incubate in standard. And uh, my God, are we drawing the lands? Chill deck, chill with the lands. I mean, the deck doesn't mind having lands because it can help flip the incubates, but this is uh, a bit on the a bit on the excessive side. We're gonna kill the Felden. Might as well. well. All right, wedding announcement's not the worst. Not the worst. Let's just get some bodies on the battlefield and might eventually draw us guards. Also works with Ginny Fay. Opponent. Gonna run out there, Saga. Mm-hmm. Ooh, Glistening Dawn. Ooh, I feel like Ginny Fay's about to die. I feel like, man, you know what, we're gonna play it. 
Jenny Faye. I mean, if they lightning strike it, that's a lightning strike out of their hand. If they don't lightning strike it, then we get to make a upgraded token. All right, opponent, lightning strike, sure. Well, we knew that was a possibility. Good news is we still have Glistening Dawn, which is gonna make some big bodies eventually. Ooh, Bank Buster. Do we glisten? Yeah, I think we wait one more turn. I think we play the land, we play the Bank Buster. I think we're actually gonna pass on drawing here and just attack with one token. <laughs> but our opponent's gonna spend all their burn on our creatures. That's a, that's a win. So next turn, so we can draw with Bank Buster. And then next turn, we can Glistening Dawn and flip into a, I guess a 7-7 seven, seven because of wedding announcement. Passing, well, draw a card. Ooh, Exarch's actually pretty sweet too. Oh my god, these Glistening Dawns are gonna win us this game. Uh, all right, so go to combat, attack you. Maybe Glistening Dawn is better than I gave it credit for. We said turn six was a sweet spot. That's where that's where Glistening Dawn really shines. Pwn ain't gonna block, but like, how do you, how do you beat a Glistening Dawn here? <laughs> Your go opponent. How do you feel it? Yeah, an opponent scoops it up. I mean, that went pretty well. So what do we want against mono red? Cut downs for sure. Maybe Sunder the Gateways and probably Depopulates. We can trim a Bank Buster, trim a Glissa a little bit on the expensive side of the curve. Maybe a Progenitor Exarch. Basically, especially being on the draw, we just want to try to make our deck more efficient. Oh, Wandering Emperor is pretty good. Maybe we go two Sunder the Gateways. That's probably fine. Mono Red, like, how many artifacts and enchantments do they have? It's pretty much just Kazan faces whatever, like the, the Saga, right? The one minute Saga. Usually don't have Fable. All right, well, that went well. Gotta hit another land or two, but seems fine. Phoenix Chick for our opponent. Cheap, cheap. Eh, all right, that's a land. Well, tap land go. Unfortunately, this Phoenix Chick is a buffer for a better creature for this Shieldred's Edict. Ooh, opponent passes. Oh, ooh, and we're hitting our lands. Okay, burning our face. Mm-hmm. Play with fire, gotta get that scry. Gotta get that scry. I mean, we are, uh, I guess we need a white source, but we're getting close to these wandering emperors. Opponent gets and hits us. I think we, yeah, let's take one more, down to 15. Opponent plays a land. All right, I guess we let it resolve. That is a issue. Let it resolve, second on token creature. I'm sure it's a Phoenix chick. Let's see if we can draw a white source at some point. Bone it, burns us. Glistening Dawn a little slow here. Well, wedding announcement. Yeah, this Furnace Punisher is punishing. And it has Menace. Oh, we really need to draw an untapped white source for Wandering Emperor. That is, that is probably the game here. Opponent, oh jeez. Um, well, double furnished Punisher is brutal. And it's a tapped white source. All right, yeah. <laughs> well, Furnace Punisher, living up to its name. You know what, maybe Sunder the Gateway is just not good enough. You know what, we're gonna keep it. I mean, there is a world, right, where they just like play the saga and then we untap and just kill it. And I mean, being on the play in general should be helpful with a decent hand. That was unfortunate timing for that tapped white source. And a little unfortunate that our opponent double troubled with, oh, we gotta keep this. No black man is sad, but. We gotta give it a go. Land and Phoenix chick. Get an in for one. Well, there's our black mana for next turn. Well, play the land. Norn's Inquisitor. Go. Well, it's good that our go for the throats are turned on. About it. Felden. Gonna get in for three. No blocks. Pass the turn. So we can flip the incubate and block Felden. We could also just kill Felden. Okay, opponent goes to combat. Ooh, not with the Felden though. So opponent gets in and hits us. Let's flip this incubate. Get a 3-3. Three, three. Draw land. Kill the flame breather. Opponent can't block. We definitely attack with the Inquisitor. Hit our opponent. Pass the turn. We can go for the throat something. I mean, if we get a chance to block the Felden, we will. Our opponent will get to draw a card, but I think it's worth it to hold on to the go for the throat. We would really like to find, all right, Reckless Impulse to draw two lands. I mean, I think our opponent probably need their land drop, so that probably isn't the worst for them. If they kill the Incubate, then I think we kill the Felden. Otherwise, we'll just block the Felden. Uh, attacks, well, we will block the Felden. Opponent might be setting up for the play with Fire Kill, but I still think that's fine. Opponent, three cards deep, play with Fire, Saga, and Land. Well, it's definitely not the Land. They take the play with Fire and kill the Incubate. 
opponent, Monastery Swift Spear. Depopulate, eh? I don't think it's worth doing that yet. I think we play the land, play the bank buster, pass the dirt. I think we just try to survive this turn and then wrath next turn, probably. Opponent, see if we can get some more value out of it. All right. Reckless Impulse. I mean, I guess if our opponent goes off too much. If our opponent goes off too much, then we might have to do it this turn. Chandra. All right, that's awkward. Can we? Well, we should be able to kill it, I think. Pings us. Down to 13. Plays the Saga. I mean, they got to attack, right? They can't not attack. All right, so we're going to go for the throw with the Swift Spear. Drop to 11. Oh, Shieldred's Edict. Well, that can also just kill the Chandra. Oh, we really want to keep waiting. All right, Shieldred's Edict. Each bonus X Planeswalker. Get rid of the Chandra. And pass the turn. Opponent takes up the saga. Ooh, Mistress Foundry. That's a bit of an issue, opponent. Wow, okay, Vampire's Vengeance. I mean, we're kind of okay with this. It kills the Phoenix Chick too, and we will draw a card. It's a land, and a land. Well, play the land. Yeah, let's play Ginny Faye. No Incubates to go with the Ginny Faye, unfortunately. Opponent gonna use the blood to discard a land. Yup, yup, yup. Well, this is close. This is a very close game. Opponent flips the saga. We'll see if this depopulate ends up carrying opponent, Mishra's Foundry. I mean, if we get a chance to block the Foundry, we will snap block the Foundry. Opponent combat. Even if Ginny Faye dies, totally worth it. Wow, opponent passes. All right, well, draw a card. Come on, Incubator. If we draw a big Incubator here, another Ginny Faye. Okay, untap. Ooh, well, cut down's not bad. It's not bad. So play the land. I think we draw right now. Because if we can draw like a Glistening Dawn or a Glissa, like we just, we just win. Ugh, all the Ginny Faze. Why do we get two of them? Is that a bug? I'm confused. Plus we have infinite Ginny Faze. Oh, 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 the treasure and the token. I see. No, that's, it's not a bug. That's actually correct. Still a little worried about just getting burnt out, but otherwise I feel like we're in pretty good shape. Opponent. Ooh, got a lightning strike to Ginny Fay. Sure. Are they going to trade with the dog? I mean, with triple Ginny Fay in hand, we're pretty okay with one dying. Ginny Fay. Where's our incubates, Pony G Jesus? Well, all right. We still got to see Ginny Faye. It was Ginny Faye Bankbuster, but that was still a that was still a good win. We'll incubate him next time. Much brew about nothing time. We are Abzan Ginny Faye incubating in standard. And yeah, I mean, no Ginny Faye, but this hand's fine. We got Inquisitor into Inquisitor into something. Maybe Exarch. Start building up some incubates. Opponent. Pa Ooh, okay, well, I guess new plan. Inquisitor into wedding announcement. Get in, hit your wedding announcement. Keep the tokens flowing. Ooh, all right, cuts down the Inquisitor, sure. Wouldn't mind drawing a land here. This is the Fable of the Mirror Breaker potential turn. No land. That Keeper. Keep on incubating. That Keeper's an interesting card. I'm not sure... All right, opponent goes for the throw. I'm not sure the correct number to play. We have two, but I could see more or less being worth it. Opponent, it's sushi. I wish we were drawing lands. I guess we need to make our opponent sack at sushi. We really need card draw off this wedding announcement. Opponent's gonna make treasures. We will go attacking. Don't like the amount of mana our opponent has, but draw a card. All right, there's a, there's a land finally. A little late, but we did find it. Oh, God. All right, Atroxa, Hardcast. Wow, a handful of goodies. Unclear if we can beat this Atroxa. Yeah, opponent has many cards in hand. Discards to hand size. Well, play the land. We definitely have to kill the Atroxa. Opponent also has Brotherhood's End. Yeah, I mean, I guess we flip it, but yeah, I don't know that Atroxa is an issue. Hit you for a bunch. Opponent goes to nine, but they can sweep the board and then play even more Atroxas. Yeah, Atroxas is a tricky card to actually beat. Opponent, Liliana. Well, we'll discard the Sunder. Well, we draw a land, we play the land. One, two, three, four, five, six. How do we beat an Atroxas? The question. 
Yeah, let's Glistening Dawn. This sets us up to maybe try to win next turn. The Glisser reanimating stuff could let us win. Well, okay, discard the Exarch, we'll see. Or the Glissa animating stuff, I mean. Opponent plays a land. Oh, God. Yeah, that's too many Atroxes. Opponent draws a new hand. Fair, fair enough, fair enough, Atroxa. Yeah, Atroxa's a, a magic card, sort of. Uh, well, Stone Brain in, Unlicensed Hearse in, Go Down, Wandering Emperors, Sunder the Gateway. How do we do this? One Glissa, one Exar. Wedding announcement. Bring in <clears throat> three invasions of Kabakan. Let's go down one. Go for the throw. Try it like that. This does give us some cards that can stop Atroxa. Do we need to not kill the Itsushi? Was that the was that the message message there not to kill the Itsushi? Like the mana from that Itsushi let our opponent just hard cast the Atroxa, and once that happened, we were just we we're done. We were just done. There was no no coming back from that, unfortunately. Yeah, we'll play first. All right, we'll try this. We do have some of our sideboard cards. Could use some more lands, but we'll see. We might have to lead on Bank Buster. Tap land, not a land. Yeah, I think we gotta play Bank Buster. Gotta play Bank Buster to try to, to, try to make sure we hit our land drops. Ponent going to duress. Do we hit our lands? Ponent takes the go for the throw and plays, I assume a tap land. A bonnet, tap land. Well, we don't hit a land, so we got a Bank Buster draw. And we still don't hit a land. Yeah, now we're probably dead. Because now our opponent could play Fable. Well, we finally hit a land. Yeah, let's Invasion. Toxrel, Cruelty of Gex, two cutdowns. Well, we're going to take the Cruelty. Opponent's hand's actually not very good, which is good for us. <laughs> Those two cutdowns, whatever. Opponent cycles Anders Lounge. Of course, their hand could get much better at any time. Opponent plays a land. It's Sushi. Well, that's a card that makes our opponent's hand much better at any time. Well, we got to draw. Try to hit a land. All right, we hit a land, but sadly, it is not the best timing. It's a little tapped. Opponent, land, combat, hits us. Down to 16. So two cut downs, a tox roll. Tox roll can't come this turn unless we kill it sushi. So we can't kill it sushi. One unknown card. We could flip the Gabacon unless our opponent top deck something. That's probably, is that worth it? Just flip Gabacon. What's the other option? Draw with Bank Buster, finish Bank Buster. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just got to do this. Try to hit our lands. All right, so we hit a land, we flip. We play the land. One, two, three, four, five. We do need to be careful of this tox roll actually coming down and also dying. That's also a bit of a concern. Jenny Fay. I mean, our opponent shouldn't be able to kill the Jenny Fay. Untaps. Up to six mana. One away from tox roll. Wow, draws another Cruelty of Gix. Takes the Exarch. Opponent passes. We draw land, we'll play the land. Glistening Dawn. Hasty Cats. Crew. Shieldred's Edict. Is this lethal? Is this lethal? That looks like lethal to me. Judy Fay. Cut down doesn't do it. Go to combat, and yeah, that's that's 20. That's 20 to the face. Try to Atroxa us, and that's the upside. That's the upside of our plan. That's where the deck can be so incredibly good. Like Jenny Fake Listening God, that stole that win out of nowhere. Our opponent high rolled us into the Atrox in game one, but game two, we got to see the reason to play this deck. When that happens, it is pretty absurd. Two hasty 8-8s, eight just GG, GG on the spot. Maybe we need exile removal. Do we need exile based removal? Exile removal would be good against, would be good against Itsushi in specific. We'll give this a go. We got Gabacon. Is that our savior? We a bank buster. Well, farmland go. Opponent. Mountain. Well, Razor Verge Thicket and Invasion of Gabacon. A braid, a braid, go for the throw. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. Taking a braid. A braid, I guess, is technically probably somewhat better. Land, that keeper. I mean, opponent can kill it. We know they can kill it. This is a game where we actually would like to kill the go uh, flip the Gabacon, I think. Opponent goes for the throat. Opponent. And Sheoldred. Well, we don't technically have an answer for that at the moment. 
Well, get drained. I'll play the land. Play the bank buster. Guess we pass the turn. The shielded is an issue. Opponent, land. We need a removal spell for shieldred. Draw a card. Down to 11. Exarch. And a land. And get drained. Oh, play the land. Oh, we're kind of dying. Exarch for one. Make an incubate. Untaps. Gain some life. Well, I mean, I guess we draw. Down to seven. Oh, it's another land. Well, there's a go for the throat, though. That's a go for the throat. That's actually huge. So we dropped to five, but we found a go for the throat. So it's not GG yet. Opponent has double a braid. So we have to kill the shieldred. There's no question about it. They do have that plaza of heroes. So we need to get that out of our opponent's hand or we need to get our opponent to tap down so much. Okay, so we, we might have to just pass as awkward as that is. All right, let's play unlicensed hers. Play a land. Can we find a way to answer the shield, Red? Opponent goes to combat. Opponent attacks. Transform the incubate. Yeah, let's transform the incubate. Double block shield, Red. Opponent has to spend an abrade. This is all to try to get this plaza of heroes tapped. Kills the incubate. Yep. We're gonna get rid of our Glissa, which is actually problematic. But we get to exile two cards. We lose our Glissa, so we need to top deck something. We do get to kill the Shieldred. So we kill the Shieldred. Draw. Draw with Bank Buster. Play Death Cap Glade. Play Wedding Announcement. I don't think this beats whatever our opponent tutors here. I think this Cruelty of Gix is still gonna get us. Opponent gets to tutor. I assume they can just take like a Tox Roll or something and cast it and then we are probably definitely very dead. Huh, this is another one, Invasion of Gabacon. Still like pretty meh. Maybe this card's just not good. At least in this deck, at least in this deck. But this has really tainted my perception of that. Opponent. Just going to hard cast Atroxa. All right, yep, that is that is legal. Bunch of lands and a brother. Well, that could have went worse, but this still means we need to top deck an answer this exact turn. Like if we top deck an answer, which would be a removal spell, we have a shot, but we have to top deck an answer right now this turn. Ginny Fay is not an answer, but we will crew. The problem is our opponent knows knows about this uh Ajano, so they're not gonna block the bank buster we do get one more draw from the wedding announcement which could be shielder's edict yeah this cruelty of gex just stole the game for our opponent opponent blocks gains a bunch of life well we flipped the invasion i mean we're dead to atroxa but we did flip the invasion oh all right this is it this is all i mean i guess we play Ginny fey either we Either we top deck exactly, exactly Shielder's Edict, or we die. Not a Shielder's Edict. Ay! Another game where Invasion of Gabacon didn't do anything. Interesting. Much brew about nothing time. We are incubating in standard, and well, okay. We kind of need our stuff to live, but if our stuff lives, I mean, Ginny Fay, Glissa, Elvish Vatkeeper, that is a, that is a curve. Slow curve, but still. We got the Ginny Fae and ways to incubate, which is kind of exactly what we want. Wouldn't mind a two drop, maybe. Opponent land. Well, all right, land of war ways. I'm not gonna run this out X zero. Opponent Esper, maybe? That is a stone whiff. Opponent. Crystal Grotto to the top. Do we just go for the gold with Ginny Fae? I mean, the safer line's probably just Vat Keeper, but. You know what? We came here to we came here to do Ginny Fay things. Let's play Ginny Fay. Like either our opponent kills it, or else we have a pretty good turn next turn. Opponent. Wow, Grotto's for days and days to the top. And all right, Shielder Z Dick. So opponent can kill it. Unfortunately, we will now play the Batkeeper and play Land of Warways. Opponent's got a lot of colors going on over there. Opponent Schwamp in Graveyard Trespasser. Obnoxious. Well, play the land. Opponent going to take it. Well, one, I guess we just Exarch X 
two. And we might be able to just get in a position where Glissa just flips everything and we go off. Is this just a mono black with a really weird mana base? Yeah, XR did its thing. And a Liliana. Oh no, opponent. Oh no. Okay, they tick down, but our opponent's life flashing before their eyes here. This Glissa is a blowout. Yeah, down to 14, but Glissa time. Combat Glissa. Transform our incubates. Kill Lily. Hit our opponent. Hit our opponent. Play the land. This does look like mono black, doesn't it? Mono black with cycling lands and grottos. Uh huh, uh huh. All right, Gix's command. We will sack a incubate. I would rather keep the Glissa. Opponent gets in. Well, I guess we're gonna have to kill this trespasser now. No blocks. Down to eight for now. Oh boy, we don't want to lose any of these though. Do we have to kill the trespasser? Is that even necessary? Let's play Bank Buster. Let's draw with Bank Buster. That's actually pretty excellent. Um, Go to combat. Incubate. Glissa is actually decent. Yeah, get in with everything. We're killing this trespasser anyway. Opponent goes to 11. Pass the turn. Does Invoke Despair beat us? Another trespasser. Well, okay. Uh, Shielder's Edict. Sack the trespasser. Opponent. More trespassing. Do we win here? Opponent goes to 12. Can we deal 12? Gonna be close. Play Inquisitor. And opponent scoops it up. I think we could have done it, right? Inquisitor, so we can use Glissa to transform everything and then crew the bank buster for lethal. So opponent's just mono black. Go down the go down the Sunder the Gateway. Maybe we try the depopulates? Is it Gabacon time? It is nice to know if our opponent has removal. We kind of want all of our all of our other things. We need our removal. We need our card draw. Kinda want the sweepers. Maybe, you know what? Maybe we just go one to populate. You know what? Let's try that. Maybe the sweepers are not even that important. We really didn't see a ton of our opponent's deck. It looks like mono black with weird mana, but we really didn't get to get a good glimpse of exactly what they're doing in their mono black deck. All right, that's that's land heavy, but we're gonna try this. Well, Glissa helps. And dreams of steel and oil. All right, you got options. Takes the Ginny Fay. Well, play a land. Play the Inquisitor. Pass the Tur. Opponent Schwamp. Transmogrant's Crown. Ooh. Oh, do we just go aggro? Probably. Yeah, let's just let's just transform and hit you. Make a 3-3. Three, three. Hit you to 16. Next turn we can bank buster and draw if we need to. Ooh, obliterator. That's a scary card. Well, okay. Bank buster. I guess we're taking five until we draw some removal. Schwamp. Oh my god, it oh we sh ah, okay. Well, now I kinda wish we brought in the now I kind of wish we brought in the the sweepers now that we see this. Opponent. Yeah, two obliterators probably makes us die. I don't know about this crystal grotto mana base if you're trying to cast obliterator. So what ways do we possibly have to win? Are there, I mean, I guess it's drawing removal. Oh my God, we drew it to populate. I forgot that we, we brought in one of them. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Pass and hope we don't get duressed or invoked. Transmogrant's crown. Oh, that's actually pretty bad, isn't it? Opponent equips. And concealing curtains. Yeah, this is a blowout. Oh, yeah, this is super bad. So we have to block or we die. We go to two. Three. Ouch. Well, play a land. Depopulate. Opponent does get to draw two cards. Yeah, double obliterator against no removal is, that is tough. Crystal Grotto do some scrying. Let's see if there's any way we get back into this. To the bottom. Concealing Curtain. And take our Glissa. We draw Ginny Fay. Ginny Fay is actually kind of sweet. Oh, can we even cast Ginny Fay? So we play the land. White. Wow, we're going to one. Green. Green. Down to one. Play Ginny Fay. 
Bank Buster. Pass the turn. These Transmigrants crowns are doing work for our opponent. Shield or Zedic, so we lose our Genie. That's unfortunate. And Gix. Yeah, these, I think these Transmigrant crowns are kind of just winning our opponent this game with the card advantage goes attacking. So we got a double block. Opponent gets to draw two cards. Yeah, the Transmigrant's crown's just making every, every threat good for our opponent. Opponent draws two, passes. That Keeper. Inquisitor. And pass the turn. So we need to start not killing our opponent's stuff. So this crown stops triggering. Are they gonna spin Gix? You can see the wheels turning. I think our opponent's thinking about it. It would only be two cards though. But I guess if they have like two lands in hand. Wow, here they go. All right, let's see what they find. Wow, they discard. Okay, underdog in an unknown. They hit a Jano. Wow, an Exarch. Okay, so not very good. We actually got a shot somehow. An opponent gets a one, two. Equips. If they're only drawing one card, I think this is worth it. So block the Gix, kill the Gix. Opponent gets to draw one because of the crown. We untap, wedding announcement. Oh, they have the underdog. Wow, this ended up being really close. So this adds more counters to things. We definitely need to not die. Okay, let's wedding announcement and Vat Keeper. Actually, we get a token. Yeah, hit you for three. Hold! Opponent says, good game. Shh. All right, all right. I don't know about that GG from our opponent, but fair. Fair, that is that is allowed. You are allowed to say, good game. That was an unfortunate game for us, I would say. All right, run it back. Yeah, opponent, the double obliterator did some uh, some serious work, especially since we just did not draw removal. Like we drew the depopulate to kind of stay alive, but boy, we just could not hit a removal spell. Zand, depending on what our opponent has, like it ranges from really good to potentially absurd if we can do the Ginny Fake listening on thing. The only downside is no removal, no removal at the moment. So if our opponent does, manage to manage to go double obliterator again and we don't draw anything could be a problem opponent tap land well razor forge thicket i think we just bank buster here take numa and curtain well i mean play the land play jenny fey crew the bank buster if our opponent flips the curtain they're in trouble opponent plays a land Okay, they go with Liliana. Gonna take down to kill the Ginny Fey. Yep. Well, we draw a land, so we will play that keeper. Wow, opponent's gonna chump it up. Okay, sure. They must have Obliterator in hand. Oh, well, all right, tap land. Shieldred's Edict. How much do we care about killing Liliana? Yeah, I think we're actually going to discard the Glistening Dawn for now. Norn's Inquisitor. Flip the Incubate. And I think we hold on to the land for this turn in case there's another Liliana. We want to keep this go for the throw. Specifically for Obliterator purposes. Well, okay, so uh, kill the Obliterator. Play the land. Transform. And I guess we also crew. Wow, GG's, GG's. I respect that our opponent GG's when things go well and when it goes poorly. I can, I can respect that. I can respect that about it. Land. Obliterator. So we can't attack for lethal, right? If we crew this, we hit, yeah, we're one short. So, well, play the land, Glistening Dawn. I'm pretty sure we have lethal next turn. Well, I gained a respect for Transmogrin's crown. That that card did some serious work in game two. We lose a 3-3. Three, three. I mean, our opponent's real problem though is these 7-7s. Seven, uh, yeah. Transform. Untap. Transform. 
This is like the reverse flawless victory. We would have to sack all of our permanents, but thankfully our opponent's already dead. Oh, I mean, incubates, it's got some upside. It's got some sneaky upside. It's not bad, it's not bad. And when it's good, it's really good. I enjoy playing it, let's go with that. I don't know like how competitive is it overall? I guess it depends on the matchup, but I don't know, it's, it's not doing horrible, right? It's not doing horrible, sweet, sweet. Much more about nothing time. We are playing some Absan Incubate in standard, and we can incubate. No Ginny Fay. Ginny Fay's a card that uh really does some crazy things. Over on farmland. Go. Land. Do we want a two-two? You know what? Let's just make it. Let's just make a two-two. I think the reason to make a two-two is possibly drawing with wedding announcement. Ooh, there's a Jenny Fay. There's a Jenny Fay. Well, play the land. I think we wait. I think we wait. Jenny Fay's gonna die. So let's wedding announcement. Go attacking. Next turn. Next turn might be the the Jenny Fay turn. We'll see. We would like to keep hitting our lands. See if our opponent has Fable. Plaza of Heroes and Fable. Well, all right. We hit a land, which is good. So we need to go for the throat. The Goblin. Go attacking. Draw a tap land. Well, pass the turn. Come on, no Atroxes in the graveyard. Discards a Cruelty of Gix. Question's gonna be, how long can we wait until we we play the Jenny Fay? Brotherhood's end. So this is three. I mean, untapping with Jenny Fay would be awesome, but I don't know if it's possible. Play the Vat Keeper. Play Razor Verge that get make a token, pass the turn. Opponent gets to flip their saga. We'd like to just do the Ginny Fay thing all in one turn to make it a little a little more uh, consistent. Unfortunately, opponent might just be ramping into Atroxa. Opponent passes. We draw a Ginny Fay. I'll play the land. Play a Ginny Fay. All right, cuts down the token. Well, let's see what they can do. Opponent untaps. Can they kill the Ginny Fae? So next turn they can theoretically just hard cast Atroxa. She old red, okay. We might be doing it. Opponent's passing. I think we transform. Oh, we draw, oh, go for the throw. It's actually pretty excellent. We get drained. Glistening Dawn. Hasty Cat. Hasty cat. Oh, do we have to kill the Shieldred? The problem is if we kill the Shieldred and then they play Atroxa. Actually, I think we just do attack with everything, kill Shieldred. I don't know if we can beat the Atroxa next turn, but I think this is our best line. Shieldred down, opponent cruise. I mean, that's that's two hasty nine nines. Opponent's gotta do some blocking. If they kill the Ginny Fae, that's kind of okay, because we have another one. We'll see what that last card is. Opponent needs land Atroxa, or I guess a sweeper. Opponent draws. They get the Itsushi triggers. I, I don't even need the land because of Itsushi. Opponent goes to seven. The question is, could we win through an Atroxa? That's, uh, that's a tougher question. Probably not. Killed a lot of Kamigawa cards. <laughs> All right, show us the Atroxa. Opponent, of course, has the Atroxa. They need to also hit a removal spell, I think, which they do. Yeah, well, now we need to hit a removal spell. Did they also hit a cruelty? So brutal. So opponent can kill one of our cats. Does that change things? So opponent's gonna kill a cat. They block a cat. Ah, oh, Atroxa is so brutal. So this just doesn't work, right? They had the Atroxa, the Atroxa stabilizes. They go for the throw to cat, they block a cat, and then they just have infinite everything. We can give the Phyrexians death touch, but that doesn't change anything. This dies, this dies, opponent gains infinite life. Yeah, all right, well, hooray. Atroxa sometimes feels a little bit like, a little bit like uh, Ugin used to feel in, when it was in standard where it just, uh, it just kind of undoes everything that was done in the game until it hit the battlefield. It just doesn't undoes literally everything. That one was a little disappointing because like our deck was doing what we wanted it to be doing. We did the Ginny Fey thing. We made the nine nines. Unfortunately, it's sushi ramping into Atroxa. Just our opponent, like they had the, they had the right cards. Like our opponent added sushi and Shieldred and like Bankbuster, every Kamigawa staple you can think of. But, but unfortunately, 
they also had the uh, the Atroxa, so everything we did just didn't end up mattering. So we got an unlicensed hearse, which can which can stop the reanimation of can stop the reanimation of um, silly Atroxa. Gonna do some cutting down, perhaps. Does not stop our opponent from hard casting Atroxa. Unfortunately, if they play Fable, we probably gotta kill the token to keep them from ramping. Like, our turn might have to be kill the token, play Hearse or something. Plaza of Heroes. Passes. Play the land. Play an Inquisitor. Flip an Incubate. Let's it go. Well, we go attacking. Our Incubate's big enough that it doesn't get Brothershood ended, which is nice. It's sushi would be obnoxious again. All right, brothers at end. Kill some stuff. I'll play the land. Glistening Dawn. Please, not another brothers at end. The artifact mode on brothers at end, really good against incubates. Ooh, okay. Well, let's get drained. We draw, oh, that's that should be game, right? Now that we drew the land. So uh, play the land. One, two, incubate power, transform and also transform and this is fair mode but fair mode's good enough transform transform shieldred's edict get rid of that shieldred make you die make you die an opponent okay that was good that was a good incubate win that was a very good incubate win that was without any of the the synergies or anything that was just fair mode you know what run it back let's take down an atroxa deck let's take oh we've been so i will say win or lose this deck has played close games like every and maybe that's partly just standard but every game is this super ridiculous super long super close grind wouldn't mind a land to let our stuff come into play untapped but all right not a land Come on, untap land. Fast land, basic land, anything to let us do something this turn. Now here's a fast land, all right, so play the land. I think we just Gabacon to slow down a Fable if they have it. Well, we're still gonna take, I think, the Fable. Opponent kept a greedy hand. Yeah, take Fable. Opponent. Needs to top deck a land. Oh, this is just, oh, they do top deck the land. That's pretty big for our opponent, that is huge. Opponent runs out of Bank Buster. They do have an abrade. We also need lands now, I guess. Yeah, let's just let's just Exarch X1. Pass the turn. Opponent drawing another land here would be especially bad. Just natural. If they got a bank buster for it, that's kind of okay. Okay, whiff, whiff, whiff. Whiff, whiff, whiff. Oh, <gasps> they whiff, whiff, whiffed. Okay, Exarch. Turn it on. Flip it. Oh, that's big. That's super big. Super, super big. Light shield array achieved. Yeah, I guess we just wedding announcement. Grow the dork, make a token. We got a shot because of our opponent's risky key. Oh my goodness, and they scoop it up and opponent. Top 600 mythic, that number is dropping. That number is dropping thanks to the power of incubates. So obviously that, I mean, we were aided by the fact our opponent was greedy with their keep, but still we we actually got to see Gabacon do something that game. That was actually like Gabacon flipping and being good. And in this scenario, Gabacon's actually great like it's growing our team it's gonna protect from our opponent's sweepers uh so eh, we've had some games with gabacon where it's been kind of like meh but in this game this game pretty impressed much brew about nothing time we are playing some abzan incubate in our new standard format march of the machine standard well, we're obviously not keeping the six lander we'll try this though i guess we just put glissa to the bottom boy this is some uh well, on one hand, we got a lot of incubates. On the other hand, we got painful lands and not many of them. Uh, more Ginny face. All right, can we draw some lands? Opponent. Well, that is a land. Yeah, I mean, run out Inquisitor. This is what we got. This is what we got. Incubate part one. Opponent, land passes. Listening Dawn two. I mean, we're gonna play Ginny Fay. We're gonna play it. Ouch, ouch, and triple ouch. If we get to untap with this and resolve Glistening Dawn, look out, magic gods. Opponent passes. Oh, it's a tap land. Okay, so in that case, they could be setting up for a sweeper. I guess we just play a that keeper. Ouch, ouch. We're gonna make a hasty boa. Casual, casual hasty 4-4. Four, four. Do some attacking. I don't think we attack with Ginny Fey because of Wandering Emperor. 
because next turn we might just have lethal oh memory deluge okay so well let's see if they got the wrath so opponent's definitely playing control opponent land sunfall so they do have the wrath well play the land play jenny fay flip the incubate hit ya no opponent. After sideboarding, we get Invasion of Gabacon. We'll see if that flips this matchup. In game one, I feel like this is probably a ridiculously poor matchup. Well, okay. Progenitor Exarch, do some incubating. Opponent Wrath Tribal over there, golly. Opponent passes. Play a Bank Buster. Opponent counters. Play a Jenny Fay. Counters. Opponent transform their incubate. Yeah, this feels like a miserable matchup for us. Opponent. Well, we'll see. We'll see if the. I mean, we're gonna skip this game very quickly, but we'll see if the um, sideboard plan is enough. Go for the throat. Not looking good. Good enough, opponent. Good enough. Double wrath. All of it exiling. Pretty tough. So. Invasion of Gabacon in. That's our that's our sideboard plan. Will it work? That's the question. Go for the throat. Seems like a dead magic the gathering card. What do we do against this obnoxious deck? I mean, I guess just cut like a vat keeper, try it like that. Yeah, pony had a lot of interaction. A lot of interaction, a lot of card draw. How good is Invasion of Gabacon? Unfortunately, our opponent's all about them exile. Well, zero lands we're gonna keep this if we draw land then this hand is interesting if we don't draw land then we scoop and we don't have to play against our opponent i think we win no matter what we draw land we win because we play magic we don't draw land we win because well we're not having to play against our our opponent's obnoxious deck all right regular bank buster denick we gotta draw with bank buster land please new no. opponent land Er, Jesus the Wraths, or the Silex. Draw a card. If we don't want a land, then we're just like, okay, we hit a land, so the game sort of continues. I mean, we got double invasion in hand, but our opponent has the Wrath on the board, so it doesn't even do much. But it gets in with Denik. Passes. Unfortunate timing for the Razor Verge Thicket, uh, but we will play it, and we will Ultimate Bank Buster. Hit another tap land. Invasion of Gabacon. All right, opponent, show us them counters. All right, so the question is, is this better than a duress? Because we could play either. We could play either. Are we better off playing Invasion of Gabacon or are we better off playing duress? Duress gets rid of the farewell permanently, unlike Invasion of Gabacon. Invasion of Gabacon can flip into something that is at least somewhat relevant. Well, I guess they can Fateful Absence the Bank Buster. Opponent gets in. I was going to say they might need to crack this, but I guess they technically don't. Opponent passes. They can just kill it. Well, we will. I mean, we're going to make them do it. Crew the Bank Buster. So our opponent's going to, going to spend a Fateful Absence to keep this from flipping. And then we are going to... Oh, they can tutor up a Planeswalker? I guess we can't do anything about that, can we? How bad is our opponent getting a Planeswalker? Probably less bad than them wrathing, although we can wait. They got, an, they got the Farewell anyway. The Farewell's an issue because that actually, that actually gets rid of all the Incubates. Play Razor Verge Thicket. I think, okay, here's how we do it. We Sunder the Gateway, blow up the Karn Silex, and then if they get a Planeswalker we're concerned about, we can Invasion of Gabacon. Oh, it's only when it goes to exile. We were worried about nothing. Norn's Inquisitor. Pass the turn. Opponent, Attic our ways. Yeah, opponent's playing a who's who list of wraths. Opponent passes. Transform the Incubate. Transform the Incubate. And play a land to go to combat. Invasion, invasion. All right. We start getting counters. Well, our goal is to do as much as we can to pressure to make our opponent farewell and have a chance to rebuild after the farewell. Wow, opponent. Killing their own Denik just to draw a card. 
maybe we can get into a position where once our opponent farewells we can Ginny fag listening dawn for the win opponent can't farewell this turn they still get to wait another turn so they're gonna take a pretty big hit here unless they draw yet another wrath we do get to invasion that doesn't get got by farewells opponent gonna draw some cards uh we're gonna correct the clue we'd like to find a Ginny fay Ginny fay is essential to our plans here all right overgrown farmland untap Gilissa. well play the land go to combat hit our opponent a bunch down to 14 invasion of Gabacon. get a peek <laughs> jeez um uh take the farewell yeah i guess we just boy this is this is a brutal matchup god our opponent is playing a absurd number of wraths don't know if it's possible that we slog through through this amount of wraths i mean this is the fourth wrath we really need our shot was the Ginny fey that's the that's the card that would have changed the equation if we had hit the Ginny fey Ginny fey glistening dawn just combo kill is the the way we could actually do it so i gotta say in this matchup at least invasion of gabacon seems worse than duress if we had duress these farewells i think we win the game and the backside protection of invasion of gabacon doesn't do anything against farewell or against sunfall so that doesn't mean overall it's worse or anything but in this matchup at a minimum i think it's actually just worse than duress would be which is kind of sad so basically we need to get the farewell out of our opponent's hand or out of their exile zone unfortunately our opponent memory deluge gets to go digging at some point maybe our opponent just times out opponent going to pass so we're gonna memory deluge by the looks all right so norn's inquisitor boy we are actually not that far away from winning we don't quite get there but we were close to one shotting here so exarch we can hit our opponent to two well flip flip and flip go to combat Ooh okay so opponent fateful absences unfortunately they still have the mana to memory deluge so opponent memory deluges goes digging well i mean i guess the other way to look at this is the amount of wrath our opponent has is is probably not something you'll realistically face very often like this is a this is a very extreme level of wraths so maybe we just ran into the the deck that has the the checkmate for what we're trying to do that's just like some wacky wacky control bill that's like i'm gonna play 12 exile wraths and then you just kind of tip your hat and you're saying oh all right i guess you got us like good luck against mono red <laughs> good luck against gruel i mean they got to do something but they can theoretically sunfall here rather than farewell all right well the farewell's out of our opponent's hand again opponent passes well we will play a land how worried are we about a counter is the question well, let's play bank buster play glistening dawn i mean maybe we can maneuver through this we're we're trying like our opponent's still like one of the upsides of incubates is if we can dodge the farewells or fight through the farewells they are good at dodging sunfall like sunfall doesn't stop us here so we have two eight eights ready to go that our opponent can't just answer with sunfall opponent urza silex well we'll draw a card it's a bank buster okay so this is getting ridiculous opponent or is a silex it's a jace of perfected mind doesn't seem that great if your plan is just to exile everything oh this actually this actually kills a bunch of our lands too wow that's awkward well play a land one one two three progenitor exarch x3 pass the turn this also cuts down on our opponent's mana yeah jace doesn't turn on very quick if your plan is to exile everything repeatedly boy i would be so happy if we won this matchup that's what wrath play the land glissa play bank buster incubate pass the turn so wait how many one two three three farewells two urza silexes and there's still a sunfall in our opponent's hand this is getting to the absurd level sunfalls 
Opponent passes. Can we get lethal here? Do we have the mana is the question. One, two, three. One, two, one. Oh my God, we don't. Yeah, we're one mana short because of the one, one incubate. So we have eight mana. This is three. Then we need to transform to crew. Well, all right. All right, we try again next turn. <sighs> Bounces the Exarch. I mean, we do have lethal by transforming all of these. Jace doesn't stop us. I don't think Denix stops us. Opponent passes, transform. Sack a non-token creature. Did we actually get there? Oh my goodness! I don't even care. I don't even care if we lose this match. That is kind of unbelievable. Six Wraths, six, triple farewell. No, seven, three farewells. Two of the Urza Silexes. One of them we got to kill before at Wrath, but still, that is a Wrath. That's five, two Sunfall, seven. Our opponent played seven Wraths that game, including many that got rid of all of our Incubates, and we still won. We probably get smacked here or whatever, but still, like, I guess that shows shows resiliency to have our board swept that many times and still end up winning the game. Should we be, they have so many different Wraths. Stone Braining Farewell doesn't even seem that good. Run it back, run it back. I'm still torn on Gabacon versus Duress. We did end up winning that game, although we probably would have won easier if those farewells were not cast. Eight mana farewells still rest our board. I honestly think our easiest pathway to victory really is just the the Ginny Fey, like opponent Wraths, we Ginny Fey combo. I think that's our our best pathway. Opponent missing some land drops would also be would also be fine. Would not complain. We got the glistening dawn. Like in theory, our incubates should be good against most decks playing Wraths. But unfortunately, our opponent's Wraths, Urza Silex, and Farewell answer incubates, which is so awkward. Opponent runs out of Denic. Well, play land, run out of Bank Buster. Island and Soul Partition gets and hits us. Oh, well, play the land, play Ginny Fay. Ginny Fay can do some things if we get to resolve cards. Opponent passes. They are looking at Ginny. Now let's Norn's Inquisitor. I think this is a safer line. Ooh, all right, hasty boy. We're gonna leave back Ginny. Opponent blocks. I assume this means our opponent's about to wrath. Opponent land. Sunfall. Well, play a land. Glissa. Incubate. I mean, opponent's only got three cards in hand. Runs out of Denic. Passes. Play the land. Play a Bank Buster. Yeah, go to combat. Incubate. Transforms their incubate, sure. We don't really want our opponent to start drawing with Denic if we can help it. Place a land. Yeah, let's just take it. We could kill the incubate, but I don't really want to give our opponent a clue. Opponent, more Denics. Well, let's draw with Bank Buster. Not the best. Are we just going for it? Probably. Play the land, Glistening Dawn. Go to combat. Transform our incubates. Yeah, I guess we get in with Glissa now. Actually, no, I don't want to give our opponent. Actually, yes, I think this is fine. They can block with Dennett to get a clue because our opponent's going to be digging for a Wrath. They got to hit a Wrath. So our opponent gets a clue. But we get to get rid of the other Dennett. Let's see if they find it. <laughs> we know they have infinite Wraths. Do they hit one? I mean, our board is impressive. Our board is impressive, but it all goes away with a single farewell. And we know they're playing like 12 Wraths or something absurd. Glissa went off though. Of course, draws a Wrath and exiles the board. I guess we need to draw something. Losing the Bank Buster hurts. The opponent plays a land. We draw even more lands. No, not like this, Magic Gods. Not like this, opponent Denix. And a land, a land, and we're gonna hold on to this Jenny Fay. Goes to combat, gets in. We draw nothing. Play a land and pass the turn. Oh no! Opponent goes attacking. Plays a land, passes. Well, okay. Stop on our opponent's upkeep. Pass the turn. 
Make your sack. Oh, if we could find something to go with this Ginny Fay. An opponent passes. Here goes nothing. Besage you. This is it. This is it. Ginny Fay. Glistening Dawn. Oh, they got negate. Ah, oh, soul partition. Super annoying, but okay. I mean, we still have two 10 tens. What's that last card? Opponent passes. Well, flink it, flip and incubate. Opponent blocks. We will pass the turn. Sunfall. Wait, can we get the combo? Well, play Ginny Fay. Opponent dissipates. We have run our opponent out of cards for now. Gonna flip their incubate. Opponent. Jace the Perfected Mind. Mills and draws. Well, okay. Wandering Emperor. Make a 2-2. Two -two. Tick up on Wandering Emperor. Opponent chumps to keep the Jace. One, two, three, four. Well, Exarch. X4. All right. This again. Mills and draws. And gets a clue. Wow, okay. Sags the clue. Trying to find that wrath. Says, oops, for some reason. Show us the wrath, opponent. Show us the wrath. Well, I mean, this has been quite the quite the match. I'll give it that. Farewell. Well, okay. Invasion of Gabicon looking pretty bad here. Wandering Emperor and Soul Partition. I'll take Soul Partition. Plague Lissa. Incubate. Picks up on the Glissa. Soul partitions the Glissa. Opponent passes. Play Glissa. Tinerans form our incubates. Kill the Jace. <sighs> Play Bank Buster. Pass the turn. Gets to Wandering Emperor. Wow, just ticks up. All right, so that must mean they have another Wrath in hand. <laughs> of course. All right, opponent. Another Wrath. Makes a 3-3. Three, three. Makes a samurai. We draw a wedding announcement. Well, all right. One, two. Draw a card with Bank Buster. Need to hit something. It's a land. Well, play the wedding announcement. And yeah, pass the turn. Not sure wedding announcement can save us here. Opponent. Top deck's memory deluge. Oh. Oh, makes a dork, goes attacking. Well, I mean, we will block. Yeah, that memory deluge is going to do it. Opponent getting to draw so many cards. We draw an Exarch. Well, play the land. One, two, three. Well, let's Exarch, X3. Do some incubating. Pass the tur. Opponent, memory deluge. So close. I mean, I guess the good news is... I would imagine this has to be about the worst, like, if you could construct the worst possible matchup for what we're trying to do, it is probably our opponents. Our opponents play literally every Exile Wrath in the format and play probably four copies of each of them, Brew. So it, this seems like just the, the worst possible matchup. And we made it really close. In the end, I don't think it's going to matter because our opponent's drawn so many cards here and drawn so many wraths. But uh, considering just the how, what this matchup looks like, I think in a lot of ways we got to feel good about our deck because this is just like, yeah, just a pile of a pile of stuff we can't like. What do you do? What do you do about about the person who just plays 12 wraths? About it. Plays a land and wrath number 79. Invasion, well, that's a good way to, good way for the game to end. The invasion of Gabacon that has been disappointing. We fought the good fight in the impossible matchup and we almost got there. I will say this uh, hour long match against every Wrath in the format does have me seriously questioning the power of invasion of Gabacon. Like maybe this is just not good enough. I really think that if we had the duresses, this would have went differently. I think apparently the Wraths that everyone are playing in this format are exile Wraths. The back 
backside is not actually that relevant as protection. As we saw here, our opponent's going to cast their farewells eventually. Like the invasion of Gabacon, yeah, I guess it slowed it down by a turn or something. And maybe it's partly the product that this is just like an absurd, it's an absurd version of control. It is like such an extreme version of control that I, I don't think we'll ever see be a real deck because I think if you play against an aggro deck rather than a mid range deck, you're just kind of out of luck. There's, I, I don't see how it's possible that you can, uh, you can actually compete with a, an aggro deck with this build. So um, I guess maybe we're, we're being overly concerned about something that doesn't really exist. Cause this is just such an extreme form of what a blue white control deck could look like. So maybe we're being overly concerned about nothing, but certainly something to keep in mind for the rest of our matches. Like keep an eye on invasion of Gabacon. Like it needs to be better than this. If this is how it plays in other matchups, I think it's getting cut, which is sad because this was one of our top standard cards. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see, but something to keep an eye on as we keep going through matches. So what do we learn this week about Abzan Incubate in March of the Machine standard? And I gotta say, we played a ton of really close, super interesting games with this deck. It seemed like every game, whether we won or lost, was just like really close and grindy and interesting. Record-wise, overall, we finished four and four with the deck, which eh, for a rogue brew at Mythic on Arena, that's a fine record. We posted, you know, one half the time. That's perfectly reasonable. The deck itself, I think it's really interesting and really fun. We got to see our big payoffs do what we were hoping they would do. We got to see the absurd Ginny Faye make two hasty 9-9s nine with Glistening Dawn. We got to see Glissa taking over games. So I think the deck, it's really synergistic. It's super grindy. You can play really long, interesting games with it. So if you're looking for something kind of different to play, I would recommend it. A couple of notes on the deck. First, some of the Incubate cards are probably a little bit underrated. Like Norn's Inquisitor, even without our Ginny Faye shenanigans, her Glissa Herald of Predation shenanigans, it's actually just kind of a fine card. A two mana one one, and then the next turn or sometime in the future, we also can pay two to make a two two or a three three. That's actually just kind of reasonable. I was also impressed with like Elvish Vat Keeper for the same reason. Three mana three three is fine, and then you also get the Incubate. Uh, Gliss, I think, was one of the surprise heroes. Triggering at the beginning of combat is really huge. So even if your opponent has removal, it's probably going to trigger once. If you incubate with it, it's making nine power eventually. So I think Gliss is kind of a sneaky good card. So I think the Incubate mechanic, it's something that might have to wait until after rotation to really take off. But the inherent card advantage of these cards like if you really think about it these cards are saying etb draw x cards but the cards you're drawing are you know random two two and three three creatures but still like there's inherent card advantage in the mechanic so i think it's something that will be good eventually even if it doesn't end up being top tier yet the other card i wanted to talk about is invasion of Gabacon. and invasion of Gabacon. I gotta say, I was actually a little disappointed in it. So we played it in the sideboard instead of duress. And a lot of times when it came up, it felt like duress would have just been better. Duress is cheaper, it gets rid of things permanently. We saw that blue white control game where we hit multiple farewells with Invasion of Gabacon, and our opponent just waited a couple more turns and still blew us out with the wrath because Invasion of Gabacon doesn't get rid of it permanently. So at least in this deck, I was kind of meh on Invasion of Gabacon, and doubly so because it seems like the most popular rats in the format are Farewell and also Sunfall, and both of those exiles, so the protection mode on the backside of the battle isn't actually that relevant against the most popular sweepers, at least that we played against. So this isn't to say Invasion of Gabacon is bad, but I do think the plan of playing instead of duress in your sideboard, probably not gonna be worth it. I think you gotta be a pretty specific deck that's really aggro and can kind of take advantage of flipping it super early to grow your team to really have it shine. So not to say it's a bad card, but I wouldn't play it as a duress in my sideboard. I think, I mean, if I didn't have access to black mana, that's a different story for like a mono white incubate deck or something. Then maybe you play it as a duress just because you don't have another option. But if you're in black and have access to literal duress, it seems like as a sideboard card, duress might just be better than Invasion of Gabacod. So anyway, that is the ridiculousness of Abzan Ginny Fang Incubate for standard that's been our much of deck for this week thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed it and i will talk to you soon